สวัสดีครับ Hello everyone um, Thank you all uh, of you who happen to be watching this clip This is a very first time for me to uh, be in this program Let me introduce myself and the program what it is about My name is Vichai u s a h a j i t and I'm the director of the PhD program in human resource and organization development at The National Institute of Development Administration in Bangkok, Thailand. Um, this is the PhD program, which is an international program, the first and only program in human resource and organization development, and we call it HROD for short. And it is my very first um, episode of uh, this program, which I'm calling it as PhD s a b a i s a b a i Talk by SHRD Nida. What does this mean by that? Of course, PhD talk meaning that uh, we'll be talking about uh, the PhD program. And what does s a b a i s a b a i mean? Um, in Thai, the word s a b a i s a b a i means um, take it easy, very informal. So this is a very informal talk that I will invite many different guests. To be in our program and talk about um, the things that related to our program, and also uh, some of the guests' experience about our PhD program. So this is a very informal talk, a very s u b i s e b y talk, an online program talking about uh, many different things. The main purpose is just to share the information about our program. But first and foremost is just to inspire our audience about learning and living a very uh, valuable life. Okay, so uh, let's start by um, me inviting our first guest of the program to join us. I will let my team call her in, and we'll talk about her. Um, Her background, her work life, her whereabouts, and everything that is just to inspire you about learning and living life. Okay, I let my team call in our first guest. Hello. สวัสดีนะครับ Okay, so this is our first guest um, of the program. Um, I'll let her introduce herself and say hi to the audience, please. สวัสดีค่ะ everyone uh, my name is Davisa you can call me k u i um, I don't realize that I'm the first one <laughs> so so um, this is please yes. go ahead okay I'm from batch one um, the very first batch of the program and um, I'm happy enough to be here with the talk today and I wish I could at least share with Many people about my experiences. Very, thank you uh, to you to be our first guest. So this is the program. Let's uh, um, just started uh, actually a few minutes ago. I mean, uh, I was introducing the, the program, which is titled uh, "PhD s a b a i s a b a i Talk" by S. H. Adinida. Okay, so. The reason why I invite you to be our first guest, of course, is because you are part of our program. So uh, let me tell the audience first. a j a n Ui, you know, like a j a n the word a j a n in Thai means teacher or professor. So I call a j a n Ui. Ui is her nickname. Okay, is uh, Dr. Davisa's nick nickname, and I call her a j a n Ui, meaning that now she's in a teaching career. So like you introduce yourself. So, can you talk a little bit about your work at this moment? Well, um, yes, of course. Um, since this is a s b a i s b a i talk or relaxed talk, I'm talking in my office with my colleague. So you have to excuse me for the phone ringing and all those discussions happening around me. Um, I am pretty much working in the academic scheme. I'm serving as a full-time faculty member of NIDA. The the institution where I got my PhD, and this is very prestigious, uh, luxury opportunity for me to have this career. 
I am now serving um, in my management position. I'm the deputy dean for academic affairs. Me and to contribute to the program from which I have learned a lot and from the program that has changed my life. So I, I told the audience that uh, actually Ajahn Ui is my very uh, talented co-worker at the moment, <laughs> of course. So we've been working together for quite some time now, okay? And um, Ajahn Ui is now at the School of Human Resource Development at NIDA, of course. And actually she is, is at the moment in the in the university area i mean uh at the moment we now mostly work from home right but uh now she's on duty at the school so we'll do the online interviewing which is which would serve us uh pretty beautifully because we can talk anywhere we are and um of course since you are our first batch student our mm -hmm. one of our prize um the what we call the products of the program, the international PhD program in HROD. Um, before we talk about the program, I would like you to maybe tell the audience what are you involved in now, since you are the deputy dean for academic affairs. So you have been doing a lot of, uh, I'm sure, something related to curriculum development and also like quality management, you know, the quality assurance. Uh, kind of thing is also I'm, I'm sure that you've been involved in uh, a lot of research projects and other academic services projects maybe you can tell us one or a few projects that you are involved in now of course in terms of research I'd like to share a bit of this program um, it le it led me to the the area of research where I am right now um, I was in a bit of leadership research, um, particularly in women and innovative leadership. Oh. Also, I, I have been loving doing research in leadership because I was the one who wasn't understanding a lot about leadership. So uh, what PhD program trained me to is when you don't understand things, when you don't fully know about things, one way to do it is to do research. And you will learn from the specific context of the research and you would contribute more to those who are in need of further knowledge of that particular area leadership was one for me and now i'm i'm expanding my my horizons of research to the non-work based development oh okay hrd has trained me to understand that okay HRD is more about um, learning and development in a work-based area that you learn or you develop yourself or your colleagues to be better at work or through work or about work. But my theory is that um, nowadays when you work from home, when you work from everywhere you feel like it, you cannot separate or you cannot even balance between the work and the life. There's no such thing. My theory is that it's a work-life integration. Mm. It's how you integrate things together. And there's no one best way of right balance because balance for you might not be the balance for me. I might be happy to, to respond to my email in the middle of the night when yours, you would not do that. But for me, I manage my time a little bit differently. And the spillover between life and work um, I believe so. So I expanded my HRD perspective to leisure. Leisure uh -huh. of I truly believe, and there, there are plenty of previous research stated that when you have certain type of leisure, it in a way develop your competencies. So that's what I am into right now. I've been doing a couple of research projects already on leisure as HRD intervention. My wish is to contribute to HRD program and HRD field to expand our horizons to non-work or like life-based development. So that's what I am really into right now in terms of research. I would keep on and on working on it. And I hope that one day I would put something new to our attention, to, to the HROD attentions that we can do more and contribute more. So, but my management work is something in not that 
fun as doing research, <laughs> but it's a thing that we can contribute to the program itself. We do um, quality improvement, quality assurance. We do curriculum development and review. We do academic services to um, students and to the, the society, like the organization may be in need of suggestion or consulting activities, we can provide that. Also, we take care of our students. We make sure that their journey is as smooth as possible. So that's pretty much my job. Wow, thank you so much. This is only part of your job, I'm, I'm sure, because you have been doing so many uh, things to the program and also uh, uh, about your research as well. I think um, talking about work-life integration and talking about, you know, like leisure and work, I think you are the only one who are qualified to do this kind of project because you are such a very good example in terms of uh, time management and enjoying your your life and your work at the same time. This is this is what I have been seeing uh, you, you know, as part of my, my co-workers here at the school. And um, so I, I believe that you will be, you know, finding a lot of uh, results and a lot of uh, new findings that will be useful in the HROD uh, field, I'm sure. And um, okay, so maybe we'll talk a little bit about um, your impression regarding the program. Uh, even though it's been quite some time since you since you <laughs> have graduated from the program, but uh, if you can recall, what would be uh, some of your maybe um, le uh, lesson learned or maybe good experience from from you know being part of the the, the program? It's a it's a it's a learning of a lifetime. I would say this program has changed me to a better person, if I would have to say. Um, it was surprisingly 11 years ago when I started this journey. Already? <laughs> so um, from day one, uh, the professor, I believe that is Professor McLean, our Gary, he shake, he shook our thinking about HROD practices that we have learned through our master degrees and our career and our working experiences, he challenged us to question all those practices, whether it's really good. He challenged um, the concept of best practice, whether it is really a best practice or not. So pretty much everything I have learned, everything that I believe that is the best was torn down to pieces. Literally and torn down. <laughs> literally torn down. But after the process of learning and doing research and going on and on with the program, we have learned that they challenge us and and get our practices torn down just to take one step back to go a little bit more further. Like you you were trained to fully understand every single element of the practices that you you copy from others, you learn from the best practice and you apply it to different contexts without understanding how could it be blended in the context itself. So it's a one step backward to go more and more and more steps forward. That's one thing. Another thing is the favorite subject of mine called the epistemology and inquiry. Such a course that has changed my perspective of thinking, of seeing research. And that course has taught us that there is no one best way of thinking, no one best way of designing research. So I was trying to understand how people think differently. It's not that I have to buy in with everything. Of course, I still read some research and say, uh, I don't agree with that. But I still understand why they think like that. Mm. That's how we change our perspective of doing research, doing the work of living our life. We can be more understanding with people. Of course, you don't have to agree with every one of them, but right. you understand the reason behind that thinking and you will become, I would have to say, you will come become a more friendly person, a more understanding person and a, a bit more compassionate person 
which that changed me a lot. I, I had, I already make a joke with Ajahn Vishay that I'm the person without compassion. <laughs> because I'm that's not true at all. <laughs> I'm perfectionist. It must be this. It must be that. And that's not nice. When you when you understand epistemology and you apply that to your life, to your work, to your career, you will learn that you can learn a lot from people who think differently. That's my impression of the program. Another thing that I'm very thankful for this program is that this program is a friendly program. The professors will not put you to the edge of the cliff and then fight or you die. No, not like that. They are your friends. They walk along this journey together with you. I don't say that it's easy, but it's not It's not in a hostile way. Mm -hmm. um, the challenge came in a very friendly manner. And this program gradually trained you to be a good academic writer. I can say that mm -hmm. the moment when I was most productive in my paper writing is when I do the coursework. Oh. Because you have to get it done in a month. That's right. Just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and you managed to do that very well, right? Managed to survive. But then, <laughs> Um, that kind of experience, when I graduated, I told the program director by that time that this is a very, it's a priceless experience of learning, but I would rather not doing that again. And today I broke my own promise. I, I value this journey enough to do my second PhD. Wow. Good luck. <laughs> All I can say. <laughs> I need that. <laughs> Yeah. So let me tell the audience that um, since you have been enjoying, you know, epistemology course so much, now uh, Assistant Professor Davisa Sitanirat is um, the instructor of that course herself. Okay. <laughs> so so That's you are bad. still enjoying epistemology, right? I do. I do. Okay. Thanks so much for sharing about your impression. Uh, before we say goodbye to you, I would like you to maybe just say a few words to the audience if they are interested in going for a PhD in the future, maybe in our program or even other programs, other PhD programs, what would be some of your tips or some of your lesson learned that you would like to um, tell the audience? Okay, let's do this. This is my personal opinion and you can take it to considerations and you can decide for yourself whether you to follow it or not. First thing first, PhD is not for those who just want a degree. Mm -hmm. PhD is for those who really want to learn and want to dedicate your life with academic. Um, once you hold a title of doctor, it's a thing that you cannot quit. It's not a position of the job that you get bored with and then uh, quit. It would stick with you for the rest of your life. So you pretty much have to think about it a bit before you enroll to the program, but before you commit to the program. Any program in the doctoral level in the world, I would say, would require you some resources of yours, such as your time, your effort, your tears, your <laughs> your your work, extra work that you would like to to, to invest in. And it is a study or a degree that you will never reach your return on investment. You will, you will invest for just to know and to learn more. So question yourself a bit before you commit to a program, whether you are ready to invest some of your personal resources, I mean time and your effort. Um, if the answer is yes, Next, you go scout the program carefully, whether it is serving your interest of learning. Because if you are in the program that is not right for you, it's a torture. Mm -hmm. But if you are in the right program that you really want to learn it so much, it's a leisure. Wow. So leisure <laughs> could be a torture for many, many, many people. So that would be my tips. 
that like you ask yourself clearly is it really what you want and then you go scout for the very right program and if you happen to do your first semester and you say to yourself that this is not right it's yours it your choice to to think whether you going to shift the program or you could put it up or anything not graduating from phd programs is that on my shoulders that i have to do this and i have to be graduated otherwise people would look down on me that's not true that's not true at all and for those who is already in the journey um have you ever heard about the one degree one extra degree theory like the water boil at 100 degrees celsius and you put your effort so hard and you were not there yet it's not done yet what 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 i missed you cannot figure it out and you about to quit talk to yourself that maybe you are at the 99 degree celsius you just need one more degree to get it done and the whole thing change the water get boiled so be or you quit ask yourself what if we are at the 99 degree already are we quitting now or just push it up a little bit further and you will get it done so that would be my thinking but wow, very nice advice i think a lot of us out there would dream to feel you know like going for a phd as a leader <laughs> just you know like having fun and you know learning a lot of things at the same time all right Thank you so much, uh, Ajahn Ui, or uh, Assistant Professor Dr. Davi Sasi Tanyarat, for joining us today. I have to say goodbye for now, and probably get a chance to talk to each other uh, again and in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Okay, so this is. Uh, uh, I was surprised by talk the first episode. Like um, you all have uh, been, you know, listening to what she's been telling us about uh, her experience at work and also uh, when she was part of our program. Because uh, Dr. Davisa or Jan Ui uh, was our first batch student, and at this moment we are now in our 12th years uh, of uh, the program. Meaning that the, the the program has been you know uh, established for uh, more than eleven years now, uh, growing up to twelve years. So we have uh, quite a few numbers of our alumni, and those alumni will be our next guests in the future. So I hope this program will probably give you some ideas and some inspiration regarding uh, going for a PhD program. But just like Ajahn Ui mentioned, that if you are now in your PhD program, uh, this message is supposed to be inspiring uh, somehow to to your journey. And um, I will try to uh, get a chance to talk to some other alumni uh, every now and then and make this kind of uh, our program part of your life uh, to inspire you about learning and living a very uh, valuable life. Okay, so that's it for now. My name is Vishay Sajit. I'm at the School of Human Resource Development. Hope you enjoy our uh, this first episode of PhD Sabai Sabai Talk by SSRD Nida. And we'll see you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Sorry, -bye.